Hello to whoever finds this journal. My days in Maryland have been rewarding as they are troublesome and is often dangerous. I have spent the last six years assembling my notes in hopes the knowledge I have gained over the time spent in this world to bring good fortune to whoever finds this and to help them get a better understanding of the world they are about to enter. My intent is to create a compendium of how the world works, what it has to offer, and how you can survive and prosper. There are times I feel my work will only serve more confusion about what I found, but I also felt it necessary to compose my ideas and experience to illuminate a path to those who wish to explore. Contained within are recipes, survival tips, warnings, and more, all in an effort to promote safe travels and an overall awareness of the world you are entering. There will be times when you will be tested in ways this compendium can neither prepare you for or help you from. Your choices as a player and a guild may lead to swift and unprecedented consequences. I believe this to be the ultimate guide for survival and success. Welcome to Mortal Online 2. Hello adventurers and welcome into the untamed world of Mortal Online. Get ready to embark on a journey into the wilds of Nave and learn the secrets to taming. Forage an unbreakable bond with the creatures that roam these lands. I'm your host Bravado and this is the Mortal Online Field Guide. Taming is one of the most sought after and versatile occupations your character can undergo. You can solo trolls with certain pets, sell master bred mounts, or at least of the time of this recording, make max level mounts, or have a battle buddy always by your side to help lay down DPS or even tank for you in PvE battles. So if you're new to the game or new to taming, then this just might be the guide for you. But first, we need to answer a few questions that you might have, such as what clades are good at taming? What's the difference between dominating and taming? What's the best way to learn about specific animals? How can I make gold by taming? All of these will be answered in this video. Timestamps are in the description as always, and important links, so you can skip ahead directly to whatever you need to know. Also, if you pay attention to the video, I will be traveling to the zoologist librarian from Maduli, so you can use my path as a reference to locate him yourself. Let's begin. Starting with our first question, what build should I go for when making my tamer? Well, that's simple. I've released a video briefly covering all the races of the game, so you can check that out, but if you don't want to, that's okay. Ideally, you want a race that is fast and agile with a lot of dexterity. Not every tameable creature in the world is tolerant of you being in their territory, and you need to be able to outrun them to survive, or out-tank them. Also, you would want to focus your character around constitution and intelligence or strength if you're going for that bow hybrid. In my most professional neck-bearded opinion, humans and velans make the best tamers. Why? Velans are the fastest clad in the game and have some of the highest intelligence next to Ogmir. They can heal their pets and use them as a shield, all while casting their own form of magic for extra kill power. They also are very handy with a bow if you want to take the other route. Humans, on the other hand, they are not as fast as Velans, but come with more skill attribute points, so you can cover more species or master one zoology of animal and come better equipped, be it with a sword, spear, or more armor, or even more magic, or social skills. They also can have slightly higher strength, meaning their preferred bow type can be a little bit more powerful. I would say by choosing either of these races, you will be having a solid start to becoming a beast master. If you would like to know more about these clads, then check out my other video that goes a bit more in depth. Moving on to our second question, what's the difference between taming and dominating? Well, to answer this, I'm going to quote Diacule, a master tamer and breeder from M01. That's well known and respected in the community. Some creatures are able to be domesticated, but some are much too wild or savage, or lack higher brain functioning. Creatures lacking this higher intelligence must be dominated because their brain is so primitive it runs on baser instincts for survival. Therefore, the only method of controlling them is through domination because they lack the higher understanding for true domestication. Basically, more intelligent animals can understand better their situation than other creatures that only respond to pain and fear, making you the alpha over them. However, minotaurs are much more advanced creatures. They have their own civilization and social hierarchy, but most important of all, they refuse to be the lesser of any creature that cannot fully best them in combat and break them down to force obedience. They only respond to respect and strength. 
Should the master ever falter or show weakness or neglect to this proud creature, it has no problem turning on its master to exact revenge. So what we can take from this is some creatures that have higher intelligence or a true neutral alignment to themselves can most likely be tamed. A short list of animals that cannot be tamed goes as follows. Walkers, bandits, minotaurs, satyrs, and spiders. If you notice, the list contains mostly of humanoid creatures, except spiders, and that is because they lack the higher intelligence to do anything more but kill, eat, and spawn. To quote Diakil again, satyrs are an advanced lizard species, but they are also very savage. Don't let their clothes and farming fool you. You are dealing with a lizard through and through. In fact, the large size of their head is due to an oversized medulla oblongata. That is correct. The medulla oblongata. Oh, mama? Yeah. The medulla oblongata. And not their cerebral cortex, meaning they're even more aggressive than less developed lizard species like crocodiles or stone lizards. So hopefully that helps you get a better understanding of what can be tamed and what can be dominated. So moving on to question number three, what's the best way to learn about the animal species you are interested in turning into your pet? There are a few ways to go about this. You can kill the animal multiple times over and cold cook or field ration the animal as a whole, like their entire carcass. This will level your zoology lore about the animal, which in turn makes them easier to control, cost less when under your control, and if you go full Beastmaster, will help work toward unlocking special attacks, and it also levels cooking experience. Or you could butcher the animal, which will give you butchering, animal material lore, and the zoology lore. But keep in mind, these methods, although good when leveling up multiple skills, the experience points gained is spread through all primary points that are gaining experience. Another way is to find the zoologist librarian hidden behind Vada. He is in a place called the Spider Valley, hidden in the North Hills somewhere across from the Spider Cave. This librarian has all the knowledge of all the animal lores currently in the game, and those are that are yet to come. So finally, how do I make gold as a tamer? Well, this is simple. Sell the pets you don't need on the pet broker. Go to the stables at any town and you will find an NPC that is called Pet Broker. From there you can compare prices of the animal you want to sell against other players selling the same animal. The higher level, the higher the price. Simple, right? What's that? You don't know how to level pets? And there's more than one species of animals? Well, I guess we better dive a bit deeper into this. All right, we finally hit the part of the video where I just dump a bunch of information on you and tell you about every skill and what it does and where to find the books and make a huge list and make some more pretty long drawn out stuff related to the topic. But not this time. Because the Tamer build can be so versatile, I can't tell you every skill that you may or may not want. However, I can list the most important skills for any Tamer to have, and the list is pretty short. If you want to be a full Beastmaster and hold some of the most powerful pets in the game, you will need to have around 600 action points available, and they can all be found under the Domestication skill tree. Let's begin the list with Animal Care. This skill allows you to train and level your pets faster. With the secondary skill of Veterinary, you can heal your pets with bandages more efficiently. You can find this book at Jungle Camp for around 75 gold at the Animus Librarian. Beast Mastery is the skill that allows you to unlock special attacks for the pets you wish to control. This isn't only limited to battle pets, but mounts also have special abilities that help them flee or defend themselves better. This book is also found at Jungle Camp at the Animus Librarian. A must-have for any character that is handling animals, whether you're a mounted fighter or a tamer or a dominator, is Creature Control. Creature Control allows you to handle higher level pets and contributes to the herding skill to allow you to carry more than one pet at a lower cost. So if you're going to search for a whole herd of horses to bring back and sell, this allows you to bring them all back without complications. But there are also three books to the creature control skill. The first book can be found at any town at the Common Librarian. The second book, Advanced Creature Control, is bought at Jungle Camp for around 65 gold at the Animist Librarian. The herding book can be also found at Jungle Camp at the Animist Librarian for about 5 gold. And this book is called Simple Herding. 
Now, I'm definitely not going to go through all the skills of the profession list because that would just be way too money and it's totally your preference, but one you may want to really consider is management. This skill allows you to have more sales slots on the broker as well as more stable space for more pets. Now, I know a lot of these books are in far off places like the Jungle Camp that is unguarded and high risk, but you can also find them on the player market at an inflated price or find someone willing to make the journey for you or with you. So let's move on where you can find the animals you are looking for. These won't be exact locations, but will be in the biomes or general area. Where can I find certain animals? If you are looking for the next tier of your desired animal or looking for something specific, you must first think about the biome the animal will most likely be living in. You won't find penguins in the desert, so to make this short and simple, we will cut the map into three hemispheres, the northern, central, and southern. In the central hemisphere, you will find tier one and tier two pets. In the northern and southern hemispheres, you will find tier two and tier three pets, just to put it in simple terms. The central zone will consist of the highest demographics of animals like steppe horses, desert horses, black bears, brown bears, belbis, tar dogs, cougars, pigs, razorbacks, wolves, and chickens. In the northern hemisphere, you will find mulvas, lynx, wolves, jotun horses, urials, and the white bear. In the southern hemisphere, you will find jungle horses, hunter lizard, terror birds, campadons, panthers, bears, and shore prowlers. Now, I rated these zones as tiers for simple understanding and simple terms, although you will quickly find out that tar dogs are generally more tanky than a belbis, or brown bears use more skill to tame than a black bear. Taming in the central zones of the map will give you an understanding of what you want your preferred animal to be or what your preferred animal can do. The central zone is where you will be able to find the more different types of animals that you can learn the lore for and get a better understanding of what they are capable of. Some creatures are debated in the community of which is better, like cougars, panthers, and lynx. Cougars are the first feline you will most likely discover, whereas the panther is located in the jungle and the lynx is in the northern mountains. Rideable pets are looked at a little differently. We will do another guide once breeding is released, but for now, mounts don't really have any tiers. They have more important stats, like speed and strength. But then again, these aren't exactly in the game either. To touch on horses, step horses, desert horses, jungles, and yotens, they are the four different types of horses that are currently in the game. Some horses are stronger, some are much faster, but once breeding becomes a thing, subspecies can be bred together to create better species or better animals. Pets like mulvas and campadons can carry the most amount of weight. Pets like terror birds and dire wolves are faster, but not as strong as a horse. A player's size and weight will greatly affect what the mount can efficiently carry and how efficient you can be at riding it. So how do you know if you're choosing the correct battle pet or mount? Much like in any animal kingdom, you will find that there are subspecies of animals, be it black or brown bears, water or hunter lizards, bush pigs or razorbacks. To translate this into game terms, think of these as like Pokemon evolutions or tiers. A black bear is weaker than a brown bear, but is easier to obtain, whereas a black bear requires more skill, knowledge, and creature control. And the white bear being the third tier or third evolution, which will require a true beast master to obtain, you will often find yourself lacking in one of these three things when trying to tame a stronger pet, be it zoology lore, pet points, or the actual taming skill itself. Much like animals in the world outside of Nave, you must train your pets to become stronger and smarter. Leveling will give them more health points, and if you have the correct skills, unlock special attacks. But there is a bit of a system to this. If you hit P by the default hotkey to open your pet menu, it brings up a second character sheet. On this menu, you are greeted with all the information about your pet, its health points, its stamina, loyalty, and hunger, as well as general commands for all your pets under your control. If you click on your pet's name, it opens up more information, including commands for the specific pet, its special attacks and abilities, naming, pet armor, pet bags, etc. Your pet's loyalty and hunger is the most important stat and should be checked as often as possible. Every time you give your pet a command, it uses loyalty points. If these points get too low, your pet will run away and search for a better life. 
until you retame it again anyway. If the hunger gets too low, your pet will begin to take damage and drastically lose loyalty. There are three types of animal diets in the game, carnivore, herbivore, and omnivore. So make sure you are feeding your pet the correct diet. If you feed them food they dislike, it will take more food to sustain their hunger, and they may take a penalty on loyalty gained if there's any gain at all. But if you're in a pinch, something is often better than nothing. Certain pets' foods can help heal your pets as well, so make sure you talk to some local cooks about their best pet food recipes. Although often you can buy whole foods at the grocery vendor or kill some prey outside of town and feed them the whole carcass. So how does hunger affect loyalty? Loyalty is super important to any animal handler. If the loyalty gets below 200, your pet runs the risk of abandoning you. You will begin to raise the loyalty when your pet's hunger is below 600. If loyalty gets below 500, it will stop gaining levels. By feeding your pet and healing it, you will gain the loyalty points back. Giving your pet commands will use these points, so keep track of this especially with battle pets, as you will be telling them to stay, follow, attack, defend, and other commands very often. Now that you learned about the inner workings of the pet system, let's talk about how to actually level them up. There are a few methods to this. For a character with zero animal care, your pet will passively level up every 45 minutes to one hour of being outside and under your control. To help quicken the process, you can tell your pet to attack the training dummies that are inside most towns and keep its loyalty above 500. So I think that's all I can say about the guide so far. If you were watching, I've walked from Meduli to the zoologist during this recording, and previously mentioned when breeding is released, we will do a short guide on that, as it's not really a skill as much as a mechanic, and anybody can do it unless they change that. Taming is a very lucrative and powerful profession if you master it correctly, from setting up battle pets and towns for gambling, horse racing, or just auctioning off the most powerful pets you have. There is no better way to make a living than off the furry backs of your animal companion. I hope this guide was insightful and helpful. If you need more information, check the links down below or leave a comment. If you would, consider liking and subscribing to the channel as there is much more to come. And you can catch me live every Wednesday morning, Eastern Standard Time. So until next time, I'm Bravado, and thank you for watching. Thank you.